Question 9. You can use this graph to change between the temperatures in degrees Celsius, so that's the x-axis here, and Fahrenheit, the y-axis there. So any Fahrenheit, we can go along and hit the graph and go down to get the Celsius, and vice versa, Celsius up and along to get the Fahrenheit. So, the first question here. Temperature in Dubai on Monday increased by 20 degrees Celsius from midnight to midday. What is the temperature increase in degrees Fahrenheit? Well, because of the fact that this is a straight line, it doesn't matter how we take this increase by 20 degrees. We could go from 0 to 20, looking at the difference there. We could go from 10 to 30. Either of those differences is going to give us the same increase here for our Fahrenheit. So to keep things simple, I'm going to look at 0 and 20, which means I'm interested in this point here, where we have... 0 degrees Celsius, and I'm interested in where 20 degrees hits the graph as well, so that point there. So that's 0 and 20 degrees Celsius from this axis here. Now, if we want to see what that changes in Fahrenheit, then we've got to read this number here, and going along, we've got to read this number here. No, nope. went a little bit low there. There we go. So the number that we have here, first of all, the small squares, all those tiny squares are each worth 2. There are 10 of them between 10 and 20, so each one is 2. And these sort of, this sort of darker one every 30, sorry, every, um, every 5 squares is uh, 10. So this here is 30, which means the little one above it is going to be 32. And here we are 4 mini squares above 60, so we're 4 twos above 60. For 68, which means the difference in temperature and as far as Fahrenheit goes, we take 32 away from 30 from 68, which is going to give us 36 degrees Fahrenheit. So 36 degrees Fahrenheit, that change is the same as a 20 degree Celsius change. Next part, Meninder, sa Meninder says 30 degrees Celsius is the same as 86 degrees Fahrenheit. Therefore, 60 degrees Celsius would be the same as 172. So what his statement is here is, if we double the temperature in centigrade, then we double the temperature in Fahrenheit. Well, the only way that that could work is if our graph here crossed through the origin. In other words, if it was 0 degrees Celsius was the same as 0 degrees Fahrenheit, then this statement would be correct because we would have something called direct proportion. But the fact that this straight line doesn't cross through that means it will not work. Now we can actually, um, is there another way we could show this? I mean, we could show this if we kept going as far as the graph goes as well. I mean, we have 30, we have, well, look at this difference that we just got in the first part. 36 degrees Fahrenheit was this 20 degrees Celsius increase. So we started at 32 and by going 20 up, in Celsius, we went up 36 in Fahrenheit. So if that was from 0 to 20, 20 to 40 would be the same thing. We would go up another 36. And then if we went from 40 to 60, we would go up another 36 again. So what it would actually be is that 60 degrees Celsius, if this straight line, if we had the graph keep going all the way up here, it would be 32 Fahrenheit plus our 36 plus another 36 plus another 36 and what we would end up from that is we end up with 108 plus 32 which would give us 140 degrees Fahrenheit that 140 is not the same as this so there's two different reasons why it's wrong the main reason why I would say it's because it's not directly proportional it doesn't go through the origin so but the explanation I just gave there would also work fine. So Mirinda is incorrect as degrees Celsius and degrees Fahrenheit are not directly proportional. In other words, the graph, the line graph, does not pass through the origin, the origin being 0, 0. So that is, well, I'm running out of things here. That is this point there. 